During these times of the pandemic, how do people like you and me get financially ahead? How do we properly save and invest our money so therefore down the road, we, you and I, have an opportunity to become wealthy? If I'm somebody that's laid off or fired because I don't wanna take the vaccine, do I depend on unemployment? Do I depend on draining my 401k plan? Many questions are coming about right now. So in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad Scripture Series, I'm gonna discuss how the Bible shares with us how faith-based millionaires save and invest their money, starting in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jada. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here. Kaylin Tia from Dallas, Texas. And before we get started, our goal is to get to 150,000 subs because we want to award a church, charity, or nonprofit $5,000 from this YouTube committee called the Seven Figure Squad to help them bless in their ministry or nonprofit work. But we need to get to 150,000 subs. And based on current count of this video, we're only 16,000 away. So please help us get, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe so we can get to 150,000 subs so we can award this money to them. So I'm gonna share with you right from jump. This is not a video that I'm gonna say, hey, invest in Bitcoin, invest in this stock, invest in this organization, invest in this company. That's not this video. I'm going to share with you some biblical truths and principles, how faith-based millions come about in their relationship with God, how they should apply their finances so therefore they grow and invest their money and build wealth that lasts for generations. So we're in the midst of a series here about how faith-based millionaires are instructed by the Bible how to handle their money. We started a couple weeks ago on God's view on wealth. Last week we did debt, career, and business. And this week we'll talk about savings and investments for tomorrow. In full disclosure, I am not a financial advisor. I'm not a pastor. I'm not an investment advisor. I run a national life insurance agency, and I'm just going to share with you what God has revealed to me over my 22 years as an entrepreneur, being a single father of three kids, being an eight-year United States Marine Corps combat veteran, transitioning into the world of business without a college degree, and how I've made my millions. And I hope this video can unpack and explain to some of you what I've experienced in my life, so therefore you can build upon your thought process, so therefore you can start thinking for yourself. Don't depend on me. Don't depend on me to make your decisions. I want to help you assist in your relationship with God, your relationship with your finances, so therefore you can create generational wealth by properly saving and investing your money according to biblical principles. So let's talk about that. Whose money is it anyway? Let's start from there. You get your salary, you get your paycheck, you get your commissions, you get your contract that you, uh, that you got awarded. Whose money is it? Oh, man, I did it. I'm the one that punches the clock in and out. I'm the one who shows up to get the job interview, to get the, uh, get the deal, get the, the contract, to get the gig, right? But at the end of the day, you have to understand from a biblical standpoint, it's not your money. It's not your career. It's not your business. It's not even your talent. It's God's. It comes from him. God says, you are blessed to have this talent. You are blessed to have this gift. You are blessed to have this job. You are blessed to have this business. You're blessed to have this opportunity. You're blessed to have these relationships. I'm giving it to you. So understand that from a biblical standpoint, the source of everything that comes your way is not from you. Nope. It comes from God. Why? God instructs us to have a stewardship responsibility. In other words, you are entrusted with goods, services, talent, money, career, business, etc. You're entrusted with it. And God says, hey, John, Mary, Sally, Jose, you are entrusted with this career. You are entrusted with these relationships. You are entrusted with your children. You're entrusted with your family. You have a stewardship responsibility to steward over it, to look over it, to manifest it, to grow it, to make it better than when you originally received it. And so therefore you can pass it on to the next generation, bigger, better, stronger, wealthier, Etc. church for the glory of God. And sadly, when you look at this responsibility, you got to ask yourself, especially in America today, are most people in America that are Bible-based, that are faith-based, that go to church, they sing in the choir, they serve the church, even then they're still citizens of America. Do you think that most people in America are financially free and financially independent? Or are more people today paycheck to paycheck? I think you and I know the answer. That 90% of everybody in America tell him, the shocking numbers is that more people today are living paycheck to paycheck more now than ever, which is sad. And here's the crazy part, which inspired me, my observation, which inspired this Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel. I've observed people in my walk with Christ, just in the business world, armed with biblical truth, going into the business world, going to the boardrooms, 
going to conference rooms, going to events, going to seminars, teaching in small groups, teaching on large stages. You know, I realized that God's principles and truths don't come back void, even if they don't follow God. What? What did I just say? Yes, people that don't follow God, but yet follow his truths without them even realizing, without even knowing it, manifest their wealth. I see it all the time. I say, bro, you don't even go to church. You don't even, you're not even a Christian, <laughs> for crying out loud. You don't, you don't even believe in God. But sadly, people that do follow God, that pray in church, Lord, bless me with a miracle. They don't handle their biblical truths as much as these folks, and yet they're not blessed throughout the week. They're not blessed throughout their life. And what these are. Why? Because they feel that everything is under their control when actually it's under God's control. I see so many people follow biblical truths, God's rules and principles about money and finance and wealth handling, and yet they're blessed immensely. So please consider it and think about that. So what's the message being told today about money? What is the message? Consider this. I was just on the news this week that Walmart is discontinuing their layaway. By the way, I think layaway is a very good financial principle. Layaway in itself, listen, if you like a product, you like an item, you like these clothes, you like this equipment, you like this computer, whatever. You tell Walmart, hey, set this aside. And I'm going to pay you over the next four, five, six months, incremental payments. And then when I pay off my last payment, it's mine. Okay? It's called delayed gratification. So I went on TV talking about how poorly Walmart made the decision to discontinue the layaway and install a buy now pay later system with a bank called a firm. So they'll allow you to do the same thing, their financial layaway, but now with interest. So instead of money coming your way, money's going to the way of this bank called a firm and many other buy now pay later type services. Walmart is also the benefactor of this decision because now people can buy their products today, financed by the money that this bank is Offering people and say, hey, you know what? It's anywhere between 0% and 30% interest. It's more like 20, 30% interest. Okay, why? Because most people today are living paycheck to paycheck. And sadly today, they're living a lifestyle they cannot afford. Now, if you are in this program, I was saying, listen, if you're broke now and you're buying things that you cannot afford with cash that you have today, well, and you finance it, well, then you're going to be broke later. So corporate America is doing nothing to help you become a better steward with your finances. I mean, think about this real quick. How many different apps are on your phone that deal with finances? How many apps are on your phone to get your money out of your bank account into theirs? Think about that real quick. You got Venmo, you got Cash App, you got Square, you got PayPal, Apple Pay. Here's what I'm getting at. There are so many apps that you have on your phone right now to get money out of your bank account into somebody else's. The question you gotta ask yourself is, do I have also multiple streams inbound? Do I have stocks, bonds, dividends, business interests, etc., that put money into my account from multiple areas? Because I got multiple apps taking my money out. I can pay conveniently from my app. I can just go, I remember I was going to Smoothie King today because I downloaded the app and attached my credit card to it. I went today, I went to Smoothie King. I just scanned the barcode on my thing, and boom, I didn't have to pull them out of my wallet. It was so convenient, easy to purchase a smoothie. I'm pretty sure you do the same thing with Starbucks and many other. Uh, food products or products and services you go out there. So easy. You just take your app and boom, boom, boom. Contactless is what they're trying to say, right? But it's so easy to get that money out of your account into somebody else's. When you're looking at what people do with the lottery, because you know what? I'm going to put a dollar, five dollars. I remember some family members in my family. How many of you guys had family members? Put it in the comment section. How many of you got family members? They religiously went to 7-Eleven. They religiously played the Powerball. They religiously played the lottery. They got the five bucks, the 10 bucks, the 20 bucks. They even went to people inside their job. Hey guys, put in your five bucks, put in your 20 bucks. We're going to play Powerball. We're going to have a shot at winning $100 million. Randomly, it's not like we're picking out numbers. Randomly, we're going to select numbers. And if we win, we're going to split up the winnings based on a winning ticket, based on 7, 10, 20, 30, 100 of us that played the Powerball because we pooled our money together. It's kind of, it's kind of like a mutual lottery ticket. By the way, there's something called mutual fund right? Where you put your money together with other investors so therefore you can buy certain shares of stocks that's publicly traded in the marketplace. But that's another conversation. But think about this real quick. How many times have you seen somebody win the lottery? Boom! They won the lottery. And next thing you know, they've taken all their money and funding and financing ministries. Have you seen that? 
How many times have you seen lottery winners in three, four, five years broke again? Why? Because their money habits, their values and principles were empty. They were materialistic. They went into the world. They went into whatever they had their desires on versus first serving the desires of what God wants you to do with that money. I wish there was a lottery when they went out there and said, you know what, I'm gonna reverse tie this thing. I'm gonna give away 90% of what I won and wanna live off the 10%. Imagine that, somebody wins $100 million in a lottery and they give away $900 million. I mean, it wasn't theirs to begin with. I mean, you took a $20, $50, $100 lottery ticket and you made $100 million off it. Would you be happy with just what, $10 million? Would you be happy with $100 million? Would you be happy with $50 million? You just live off 10% of your lottery winnings and you, t- and you tithe and give 90% of it away. Wouldn't that be awesome? But you don't hear that story. You are about all these people going broke. We we're just talking about athletes and finances and a couple episodes ago throughout the week and how many athletes three, four, five years after playing in the NBA or NFL, three, four, five years after their professional career is over, they're back to being broke again. They're working at Starbucks, they're working at Enterprise Rental Car, they're working at DoorDash, they're working at Uber because they can't get a normal job because in their mind they're still performing at this level even though the world says, hey man, you were a professional football player before but in corporate America or in the business world, you're starting from scratch and you're starting from the bottom. Can you empty your cup that for the four years before you're playing NFL, you're the big man on campus and the four or five years you're in the NFL, you're the big man in the city and next thing you know, you're done, you're done with your contract, you're done with your playing career professionally and now you're just a has-been, and now you got to start all over again. Are you okay with that? Are you okay with emptying a cup? Are you okay with starting from the bottom? But yet God has blessed you with talent. God has blessed you with discipline and work ethic. Can you still use those principles to still get you ahead in business and help you grow your finances that way? The relationships that you built. See, that's stewarding over your professional playing career. Another part about this. Let's take a look at what Proverbs says about lottery winners. Proverbs 13, chapter 11, it reads like this. This honest money dwindles away, but he who gathers money little by little makes it grow. You see, faith-based millionaires don't get rich quick overnight. Matter of fact, I did an episode about this, so check this episode out right here. Why faith-based millionaires don't get rich quick. It's, see, it's not a biblical principle. Of course, you can have a big deal, you can have a big contract, but no more importantly, it's what you do with it and what you do with the finances that have been sent your way. Again, because it's not your money, it's God's money. And here's another thing. I, I, I've been reading the Bible. I'm looking for scripture that relates to retirement planning, right? Retirement planning. So when I was supposed to retire, when I was supposed to be 65, 70 years old, 75 years old, and trying to kick back and retire and just have the remote and just, you know, enjoy the ocean and enjoy doing nothing and just enjoy my grandkids. There's no such scripture that relates, in my opinion, to retirement planning. For the biblical scholars, let me know. I interviewed uh, Rabbi Lappin, and I asked him, at least in the Old Testament, Rabbi Lappin, do you see any scriptures relating to retirement? He says, absolutely not. I said, you know, I've, I've always felt in my heart that uh, retirement planning is not biblical. It's made by man. 1935, FDR created a social security system, and he announced a retirement age of 62 years old. So everything after that, people say, okay, I need a plan for retirement. I need a plan for retirement. It's my retirement age. Who is to say you're supposed to retire at 62? Why don't you retire at 72? Why don't you retire at 82? Shoot, why don't you retire at 42? Why don't you retire at 32? Here's my definition of retirement. And maybe some of you will identify with this too as well. My definition of retirement is you have so much money coming in above and beyond systematically and automatically above your expenses. So in other words, you have $10,000 a month in expenses, but you have $100,000 a month in net revenue. You have $90,000 of carry over into the next month. What do you do with that? You give it, tithe it, fund another business, invest in other deals, create more money and make more money to bless God's kingdom, plant a church, take that money and invest in water infrastructure in countries or cities, even in America that doesn't get clean water. What do you do with that? See, in my opinion, that's retirement plan. That's financial independence. It's not just kicking back, doing nothing. You spent your whole entire life in a career, dealing with people, dealing with a, a set of skills for 20, 30, 40 years, and now at 62 years old, you're supposed to do nothing with it? I don't think I get that aspect. In Leviticus, it talks about the Levites were retiring at an age to go back and mentor the younger pastors, to mentor the younger generation coming up. It wasn't to kick back, relax, and 
click on a remote and watch everybody work while you sit back and relax. So that's what the world is saying. So how can we be better? How can you and I become better? How can you, watching this video right now, use the values and principles to become a faith-based millionaire and how to properly save and invest your money? Well, let's take a look at the wisest king who ever lived. His name was King Solomon. Okay, the wisest and the wealthiest king who ever lived, who led for 40 years the people of Israel through wealth, prosperity, happiness, enjoyment, because they were good stewards of God's blessings. So let's take a look at this. Again, avoid get rich quick. Avoid this conversation about vacation. I've never liked the word vacation. If you go back to the root word, the etymology of the word vacation, vaca and shun, right? If you put the, the two words together, vaca comes from a Latin root word meaning to remove itself, to remove itself. In other words, like you're vacating an apartment, like you're vacating these premises. That's where vacation comes from. Vaca is to remove yourself. And shun, T-I-O-N, means a present state of being. So in other words, if you look at the etymology of the word vacation, to put it all together, it means to remove oneself from its current present state of being. What type of life is that? Well, what do most people say when they're on vacation? I don't want this vacation to end. One more day, one more day. I don't want to go back home. I want to just stay right here. Hey, what type of life is that to live? You know what happens when I travel the world with faith-based millionaires? We've traveled to Aruba a couple months ago. Earlier this we went to Maui. Uh, Pre-pandemic, we went to uh, Costa Rica. We went to Dubai. We've been to all places all the world. We're due to have different trips to uh, Paris and Monaco and, and, and Cancun and Tulum coming here in the short near future. But guess what we have a conversation with when we're on vacation? Quote, unquote, vacation. Okay? When we're on vacation, we spend a couple days. We travel, eat, boom, boom, enjoy experiences. Our children play together. And we're saying to each other, man, I cannot wait to get back home, man. I'm recharged, baby. I can't wait to go back and manifest God's blessings and multiply and help and serve other people. So therefore, they can enjoy this too as well. So there's a difference between a vacation and a vocation. What do you want in your life? Do you want to have more vacation in your life? Or do you want to have a vocation where you're passionate and truthful about who you are and what you do every day in, out, that you're the same person at home as you are at the office? I mean, a lot of people today, they change who they are. They change who they are when they leave the house, they get to the job, and they have to metamorphosize into a boss that has bad, you know, rapport building skills because they got to defend themselves because they got to protect corporate America, whatever the case may be. Listen, the best people out there are the people the same at home, the same at the workplace, they're the same at church, they're the same with their alone time, they're the same with their family. What do you want? Put in the comment section below. I want a vacation or I want a vocation. Put in the comment section below. The other thing here, what's going on today? This huge amount of government assistance and unemployment checks coming people's way. Yeah, man, I love this government checks. It's free money from the government. I mean, you rich people, Right? They, you deserve, you make a lot of money off the country and backs of, of poor people, you deserve to pay us back. Listen, guys, that's a horrible, horrible perspective to look at the world. And that's not what God wants you to do with the time, the money, and the resources that have been blessed to you. Let's take a look at why. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 10, verse 5. It reads like this. He who gathers crops in summer is a wise son, but he who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful Son, so in other words, everybody's out there working. Everybody's busting their tail. But you're at home collecting unemployment check. And guess what happens to unemployment checks? Eventually, that season stops. And then what? What do you do? You get back in line. You just spend another three, six, nine months getting back your skills back in order. So therefore, you are hireable again. What type of attitude and behaviors did you exist and display while you're on unemployment? Many people are not truthful about their job-seeking capacity throughout the week, so therefore they can get that unemployment check the next week. And you guys got to know, too, September 6th is when the last time the $300 extra federal benefit expired. So therefore, you're just getting state unemployment, not federal unemployment. So what do you guys want to do? Do you want to shrink your dreams? Do you want to shrink whatever God's blessed your way to inspire to, in your spirit to say, okay, Lord, I'm just going to shrink whatever the blessing and inspiration and vision you gave me because I just want to stay in unemployment for a minute. Because if I make too much money, whoa, they're going to take away that unemployment check. They're going to take away my disability check. And I'm no longer going to manifest the blessings and the vision you gave me. Is that what you're doing? Are you a proper steward of the vision and inspiration that God has given you? Is that the way you want to go about living your life? Worse, is that what you want to feed and teach your children? You want to feed them that financial truth? You want to feed them that vision, that reality? Because, listen, children can care less long-term about what you say. They care and embody more long-term about what you do. And some of the values and principles and behaviors you display, especially during tough times. Here's another scripture. And King Solomon is referencing 
how awesome an ant is. How many guys have ever seen ants? You know, the insect? How many guys have seen ants? I mean, they're working together. You have an ant hill, they're all working together. You see an ant colony. You think it's dirt, but it's a bunch of ants, right? Well, King Solomon says, hey, why don't you consider the example of an ant, not even a human being. He says an ant. He says this in Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. It reads like this. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. Let's go on to verse 9. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? Let's go to verse 10 and 11. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a bandit and scarcity like an armed man. You see? You see how King Solomon, the wisest and richest king who ever lived, guess how you feel about people sleeping in? A little sleep, a little slumber. Next thing you know, life just passes you by. Because here's a sad reality. Whether one year go by or five years go, it's going to go by. If you're still here one year, five years, 10 years, 20 years, God bless you. The question you got to ask yourself, if you go experience one year, five years, or 10 years, 20 years, you look back and you ask yourself this, what do I have to show for? And that necessarily may not be financially, especially in the first one or five years. Because overnight success is according to many principles. A lot of overnight successes take 10 to 20 years to build. There's a problem with a lot of people today. The ways that the world says, get rich quick overnight. Nope. Back to principles. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 11. Wealthy people, little bit by little bit, they incrementally grow. Why? Because their character builds. Their skill set builds. Their relationship with God builds. It doesn't happen overnight. Think about the relationship you have with your wife, your husband, your children. Doesn't it incrementally grow by time? It's not an instant relationship. Oh, you're 13. We have an awesome relationship now. Teenage son or daughter. Oh, we just got married. We're going to have an awesome marriage here day after the honeymoon. No, it's a growth of a relationship as you grow together as human beings. Same thing with your relationship with God. Same as your relationship with God is bestowed upon your heart about finances and saving and investing. It's just not get rich quick overnight. You're learning along the way. You're learning how to take God's blessings your way. Save, manifest, and grow it little bit by little bit. You can't say, man, I'm the same person I was five years ago or 10 years ago. I'm different today. I hope you can say that. Or are you the same person that you were a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago? That you're a little older, you're a little bit more skeptical. You feel that the best years of your life is behind you versus the best years of your life is in front of you. How do you feel about that? By the way, faith-based millionaires, they believe that the best days, boom, are right ahead of them. A couple other things to consider. How can we get better financially with our relationship with God and money? Saving and investing. How about your priorities? Priorities and leaving an inheritance. Let's go to Proverbs 13, chapter 22. It reads like this. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children, but a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. In other words, yeah, you might be getting, you might be getting rich, you might be getting wealthy now, but are you leaving an inheritance? Because if not, guess what? That's going to be stored up and removed from your pockets into the pockets of the righteous. And some of you guys say, well, Matt, you know, you don't understand it. You know, I've always got emergencies to come up, you know? I got things that always come up, but always come up. Well, that's life. So some of you guys blame yourself that you're not making enough. Well, here's the thing. As I wrap up this video, some of you guys said, I can't afford it. There's financial instruments today that allow you to financially get ahead, like life insurance, emergency funds, the proper and wise use of debt. You know, last week I talked about, I love debt. I love, more importantly, I love credit cards. Okay. Because debt, if you use it the right way, allows you to write that off on your income taxes. So therefore, you can keep more of what you've earned versus it going to Uncle Sam. And at the same time, too, last week I said that I went to a funeral. I buried a, a brother of mine, a Marine Corps brother of mine. He's known me for 27 years. Sadly, I had a tennis funeral last week in Delaware. And a flight back, I was hungry. And a flight back, I was rushing to drop off my rental car and waited for the uh, uh, plane to take off. And based on my credit card, my American Express Platinum, guess what I was able to enjoy? Free food at the Delta Sky Club, the Centurion Club. Access. See, the proper wise use of money gives you access. And speaking of life insurance, we did, we did a whole series of life insurance. How faith-based millionaires use life insurance to build wealth. Check out this episode. And sadly, this year I've had to bury many people. Whether it be COVID, pandemic, or other natural causes, or in some other causes, we've had to bury people because of the senseless murders that's going on in Chicago. Big reason why we moved down to Dallas, Texas. But thank goodness, many of the people that we had a relationship with, family relationship, business relationship, they had this financial instrument called life insurance. Instead of going to the funeral, just offering prayers and condolences, we're offering 
a check from an insurance company say, listen, with this prayer and condolences, your friend, your relative, your family member was smart enough to think about you guys and he was thinking about living in inheritance for his children's children. Boom, here's a check. You see, that's what I love about the noble industry that God has chosen me to serve in, which is the life insurance industry. So think about this. Last but not least, oftentimes you go through our life, 90% of people living paycheck to paycheck. I was one of those. 1996, I filed bankruptcy in Orange County while I was serving in the Marines. At point, one point I was saying, I can't afford it, I can't afford it. Well, here's the thing. God says you can't afford it. God says, what are you talking about? I've given you everything. You just have to know how to ask for it. So instead of saying, I can't afford it, ask yourself this, God, how can I do this? If you say, Lord, I can't save and invest, ask God, hey, how can I increase my skills so I can get a better job? How can I have the faith and courage to start a business? I've always wanted to do it. Ask God those questions. It's a better thought-provoking, positive energy type question that stirs your soul and check this out, guys. Based on those questions, it gets you closer and closer to your relationship with God so God can magnify through you how awesome he is and how you can track people to be better stewards so they're going to save and invest their money properly so one day down the road they can be a first-generation cash flow faith-based millionaire too as well. It could happen to me. It can definitely happen to you. So before I let you go, I've been referencing these couple videos here for the duration of this episode, please check out these videos. One video I'd love for you to watch is the parable of the towns, Matthew 25. I unpack how this story in the Bible has made me millions, which is, I believe, an extension of this episode today. So please check out this episode right here and uh, let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. So being said, guys, I'd love to know your thoughts, your comments, your feedback. You agree with me, you don't agree with me, put it in the comment section below too as well. And if you're watching this on Facebook, please click like and follow business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you guys.